Birds bring a very different level of dynamism in any scale model scene. Whether you're building a diorama or a model train layout, addition of even one flying bird can transform a scene to a soaring height. Today I'll demonstrate my method of creating scale model birds using nothing more than paper and modeling clay that is suitable for any mid-size scales like 1 is to 72, 1 is to 76 or HO scale for model trains. It is always good to start with a large bird. I am building a scene in the Caribbean island, so gulls are a natural choice. A quick search on Google showed that one of the most common gulls in the Caribbean are called laughing gulls. Then an image search showed their shape, wing geometry in different flying positions, and the general color scheme. Wikipedia says the birds are up to 41 centimeters long, with up to 110 centimeters in wingspan. Now the first step is to decide on the scale dimensions of these birds. Since I was modeling in 1 is to 72, simply dividing those dimensions gave me a range about 6 mm long and 15 mm in wingspan. For other scales, you can follow the same method to derive at the size of the bird suitable for your models. Once decided on the size, I took a 75 GSM watercolor paper and drew a 2D outline of the body and the shape of the wing as it would be seen from the top. Next step was to cut the 2D outlines using a hobby knife. Notice the various shapes I used to denote different flying positions. I constantly referred back to the images from my research to derive at the appropriate shapes of the wings. Then I took the 2D outlines and folded the wings in appropriate shapes for specific flying positions. The real-life images were immensely helpful to decide on the right fold and curvature of the wings. Once the wings took shape, it was time to start sculpting the body. For this I used white modeling clay. A small amount should suffice for all four birds. The consistency of the clay is of real importance for a sculpt so small. I took a small amount and used a palette knife to mix it thoroughly with water till it was smoother than mashed potato. I used a toothpick to apply very small amount on the 2D area of the body and slowly sculpted the aerodynamic shape of a bird. Took small amounts of clay and applied incrementally, occasionally using water to control the flow and smoothness. I used the fine pointed end of the toothpick to manipulate the clay to form the beak. For painting, the color scheme for this bird was pretty simple. Grey, black and white. I used acrylic paint and used acrylic matte medium to control any unwanted shine on the birds.
I used the bristles of my flat brush to add the texture of feather. I dried the paint about 70% on my brush and then used rapid vertical strokes to create fine variation you see on feathers. Again, reference photos were of immense help at this stage. For the white edges on the wings, I again took my flat brush but this time I dried the paint on my brush to about 40-50%. to I used the bristles to carefully paint the edges white while retaining the brush strokes to simulate the texture of feather. Once the wings and the body were done, I painted the head and the legs dark grey. To distinguish the birds as laughing gulls, I decided to paint the beaks red. I used super glue gel to fix the birds to the supporting objects. Now this is tricky business. For the effective simulation of flight, the birds should not appear to be supported by other structures. The only way to achieve this is to fix them at the very edge of the most extruded part of a structure and glue them at the tip of their wings. In this case, underside of the extreme end of the wooden stock of the anchor. Super glue is best suited for the job, but you have to ensure to add sparingly and be careful that over application of super glue doesn't ruin the models. The lightness of paper construction also helps in this occasion. As the photos will show, another option is to glue them at the tip of an extruded leaf or a branch of a tree. A trial and error before applying the glue is recommended to find the most effective spot, keeping in mind the most common viewing angle of the scene.